So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen closely as I'm going to give you the real secret to controlling your teammates. And here is exactly how you do it. You don't. Well, sort of. You don't literally control their keyboards and their decisions, but you can influence them with yours. And before you click away and get upset because you have this image in your mind of being able to tell your teammates what to do and show call your way to victory, let me remind you that your greatest chance of success and climbing is not your teammates, it's you. Now, I know it doesn't make sense to you yet, but don't worry, it will. Stick with me here and let me help you enjoy this tragic game because if the devs cannot fix it, well, I can at least let you enjoy the game more with this new knowledge and this new power. I know what I'm talking about and I guarantee you I will make you climb the rank ladder. It's my passion to teach others and see them succeed and I've got a great track record of doing so. With that out of the way, let's get started. Overwatch is a counterintuitive game. Because of that, people pick up bad habits that make relearning the game even more difficult to the point where often people think of the game backwards. This is often what I try to tackle first when I am coaching players, so that we are all on the same page about what our goal is and how to tackle solving problems. And for what I'm going to be discussing today and explaining, for it to make perfect sense to you, we have to go over three fundamentals. Resources, corners, and space. Now don't skip this, even if you think you know it. Overwatch as a game is built on these fundamentals, and without perfect execution on them, you can't execute the more advanced concepts. This is why players often get hard stuck, and don't worry, I'll make it quick. Resources are quite literally your entire kit, from your abilities to your ammo. All of these resources add up to a certain value that you can provide for yourself and for your team. So when you execute a play, make a move, then you want to make sure that you have the maximum amount of resources available to you that have the highest chance of making an impactful play. So if we want to maintain our resources without being forced to use them, then we have to use our next fundamental, corners. And this is for one simple reason. We are looking to be in control of the situation. So if we peek around our corner and see that the enemy team have more resources, then we can fall back safely. And if we see a mistake that we want to punish, then we can choose to execute it and act out on it. That is why corners give us control. Lastly is the most important concept in Overwatch, space. Space is fundamentally simple to understand, yet lays the way to all the advanced concepts. Space is the area that you can walk between. That's it. If someone's holding your spawn door, then you have to shoot at them, push them away so that you can walk past them, right? So what space we can walk in is dictated by where the enemy is positioning. Good job, you made it through. And now I can finally explain how Overwatch works. The 101. The team that has more resources will have more space. Therefore, they will win the game because it's an objective-based game. This is crucial to understand and a connection that a lot of you might have already made before or new players haven't had that because Blizzard honestly doesn't do a good job of teaching us these. There are four rules that we will be talking about today. Rule one and two are the most used, the major rules that dictate your decision making all the time. Rule three and four are dependent on the flow state of the game. Starting off with rule one is a rule that you use when you have control of the map and therefore the objective. This means that the enemy team is forced to come through an open space and their pathing is predictable so that they can get to the objective. To quickly explain a little bit about open space, open space is space where you are not protected by corners or natural cover. Thus, it's very bad to be in. You will need to position yourself in a position that gives you a lot of control so that when the enemy team makes a mistake, you are ready to commit to making your advantageous play. How aggressively we position ourselves is highly dependent on our role and specifics of how your character works. But I'm confident you have a good idea of that already. And if you don't, you can ask others in the comments. A very successful, easy strategy to do following this rule is to play your advantageous position. Use the corner to try and use your poking tools without committing any big resources of your own and to make the enemy team use theirs to scare them. And when they use theirs and they continue to be out of position, you can then pounce with your resource advantage. Be careful to not overextend yourself too far from your own safe corner, or you will not make it back to safety in time if you didn't calculate it correctly. Just remember that if you leave a corner, you are entering into open space. For rule two, in this case, you are the one that needs to take the objective, meaning that you do not have control of the map. 
and therefore you are at a natural disadvantaged state. The goal is to move across these open spaces from corner to corner, inching your way closer so that you can be as close as possible to the enemy so that when they misstep or overstep away from their own corner or make a mistake, you are there to punish them. You can often do this by using open lanes on the map and you can get creative with it. What I think will help a lot of you when executing these rules is to know that it is okay to sit still at a very good yes. position. Hi. Because if somebody's not making a mistake, well, they're not. And when they do, you need to be ready. It's not something that you can necessarily force other than some of the strategies we talked about and that I will teach you in future videos to do this even more efficiently. But just hear me say it. You, you don't have to force fights. It's okay. Somebody will make a mistake and you're there. You're ready. If no one's out of position, why go out of position yourself? It's a lose-lose. You play to punish other players. I think this one is not the hardest one, but this is the cause of all our bad habits. Because most players live within this rule and causes all this low quality of play across the ladder, right? Because rule three is a rule where if the enemy team is regrouping or they're down a lot of resources and they have a window of opportunity where they can't threaten to take space because they're so weak, right? If you use one of your cooldowns during this time window and you get your cooldown back before they've threatened to push you or kill you, you've essentially gotten away with a free cooldown. Now, whether you're a veteran or a new, I would really recommend for you to live by rule one and two when you're trying to repurpose your fault process. Because then if you get a better understanding, then you'll know the windows of opportunities where you can execute rule three. If you rush it or try to combine them all at once, let's just say you'll struggle a lot with learning any of these rules efficiently. Just focus on one rule at a time, mainly one and two. The last rule I think is something that a lot of people need to hear because if you remember, space is dictated by resources. And if you're holding in one of these good positions, but the enemy team has more resources than you, let's say you lose a teammate. This means that you're down crucial resources and you can't overwhelm the enemy team or punish them out of position anymore. Out of your control, it was a teammate that died. It's going to happen. If you have the ability to recognize when it is absolutely unwinnable, you can then fall back to an earlier position to your next safe corner, which will then reset the distance again, which then resets rule one and two. It forces the enemy team to come through open space to you again. The earlier and sooner you can recognize this, the higher a chance you have of punishing an enemy that is out of position and therefore carrying it again. If this makes sense to you, you've got it down. If it doesn't, don't worry about it yet, but just know that we shouldn't hold our ground no matter what. Again, this is something I will go over in future videos and I'm really excited to make and share. And trust me, I will make all of you a god at this game. But you clicked on this video because you want to control your teammates. And let me answer that. How does this influence your teammates? Because they won't be following these rules at all. In fact, they'll be wasting all their cooldowns to push through open space like it's nothing. Well, don't worry. Because so will the enemy team. And that is the secret to making your bad teammates play good. If you can punish these enemies that are in bad spots because you've retained your resources, you will force them back. You will reduce their resources. You will reduce their power and ability to punish your bad teammates. So supports, stop healing your teammates and start punishing the enemies that are out of position. It'll do a lot more in the long run. And the best part is, this is just one of the many ways that good players can control the game and is honestly a very common byproduct of smurfing. There's been this conundrum that I just could never answer where if we're smurfing, somebody would say, oh, I don't get teammates like that, right? Why? Because you do, we all get the same teammates. And I think this is because the enemy team is getting stomped so hard that it makes our teammates look good because they have that natural resource advantage. Now listen up everybody. I do paid coaching where I can teach you this very clearly and much, much more. So if you're struggling or want somebody to ease the grind and answer the tough questions and help you identify your bad habits, know what to work on, make the game more clear than ever before, I will be happy to help you because I can do it in a clear, concise way, allowing you to achieve your maximum potential much more quickly and you get your money's worth. Trust me, link in the description to my Discord. But if the coaching is too expensive for you, then I have the best value for money educational content for Overwatch on my Patreon, where you can find all the coaching vaults that I do with other people, meaning that you can have hours and hours of educational content for much, much cheaper. Lastly, let me know, as always, what we could have done better, explain better, edited better, anything. I have a lot more that I want to teach and explain, and we always want to raise our 
own quality of content because it's time to take over YouTube, everyone. Much love.